to start off with how did you end up at Harding and what, what brought you to Harding? Uh, as a child, we visited once, so I always wanted to come to Harding. Uh, track wasn't even in the picture at that time. Then I got to be uh, a little bit more successful in track in high school, so I had a couple scholarship offers and uh, Coach Lloyd approached me. I wanted to come here. Um, they didn't have scholarships, so I opted to go to Southern Illinois University and then he came up with a work scholarship to come here. Um, so I came here on a work scholarship, not sure exactly what work I was ever supposed to do, but I was here on a work scholarship. And I mean, what was it like uh, back in the early 70s as far as uh, the facilities um, and uh, for track and field? When I first came here, um, of course, I did the Fosbury flop, which was relatively new at that time. And the, the pits that they had for me were basically foam in kind of a netting which if I, I'd probably be paralyzed by now if it hadn't been for, he went to one of our local upholstery places and had a set of pits made for me, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, our weight room was the backside of the old uh, weight room for the football guys, which was really small. It was really not very good. So we always felt like we got the leftovers and that's pretty much it. I remember at one point, getting a pair of marathoner shoes as far as workout shoes, which had a sole on them about that thick. But they, they look good on my wall. You set so. the school record uh, in the high jump. Correct. Well, what do you recall from that? Well, I set that at the national meet. Um, the national meets I thought were very interesting. I was really disappointed because every one of them was at Henderson State and I was hoping to go to Hawaii or somewhere, but that <laughs> just wasn't happening. But. Um, I had been injured most of the year. Um, I was uh, about a week or so before that meet hit. They uh, uh, had uh, Dr. City came in and injected my knee, and uh, for about two weeks I didn't have any pain. I changed everything I did. I'd actually not won the AIC meet that year, and so uh, I went into that meet with not a whole lot of expectations. I changed a lot of things up, and lo and behold, I was doing really well. So. Uh, and that's where I set the record was at the national meet. What are some other moments that, that really stand out in your career? Probably the biggest standout. We used to do different things. And one of the neat things that we did was during spring breaks, we would go on trips as a track team and do, do, do meets. And so we were going to Florida. And we went to Stephen F. Austin University. And I was walking down the football field and uh, as we were all warming up and one of our and one of our uh, shot putters was walking down there and all of a sudden this javelin comes out of the air and sticks him right here in the back. He goes down on one knee, reaches back, pulls it out, and of course he didn't compete that day. But I mean he went to the doctor, came back, it hit his scapula, it didn't really hurt him much. But man, it's, I never forgot that. <laughs> and, uh, very interesting. Well, what about some moments for you, though, uh, as far as uh, personally, and, and obviously you set the record, but some, some other meets that really stand out at you? You know, there's not a whole lot. We did a lot of meets. We did meets every week. We had um, uh, dual meets and all that, and I had uh, uh, a, a tendonitis that really wouldn't let me jump. And so what I would normally do in all the meets is I would wait until everybody was done, and then I'd jump one time, and then I'd lay in the pit. and and hurt till the pain quit. Um, but the conference meets, we always seem to be fairly competitive. Those were always exciting for us. Um, other things that was interesting is we'd take a bus. We never got to ride the, I never rode the, the bus. And we were always in a school bus. And we'd sleep under the seats and you know, I never even thought about air conditioning. We didn't have such a thing, but. Uh, so it wasn't a glamorous uh, uh, travel? No, no, it, you know, it, it kind of wore you out. But it was uh, expected, and we went to every school, and they came, every school came here, so uh, it was pretty neat. What about Coach Lloyd? Tell Coach Lloyd was a, was a neat guy. He did everything he could to basically provide for us what we needed to have. Uh, coach Sharp was my personal coach. He's the one that uh, was a high jump coach. But like I said, when I first got here, Coach Lloyd provided the equipment that I needed. Uh, always had the encouragement. 
he took me to Dogwood Relays, to uh, Drake Relays, you know, some of the bigger meets that really wouldn't be expected to go to. I had, after the national championship, I got to go to the meet of champs in uh, Berkeley, California and compete against uh, people like Dwight Stone, who had the world record at that time. And um, I just had a lot of admiration for him, and he was, he was also a really great example for us at that time. You mentioned some of the traveling, riding the bus. Uh, what, what was the AIC like uh, back in those days uh, for track and field? You know, it was really competitive. It would be uh, significant to like our, our uh, conference uh, championships now. Um, uh, everybody came in with the expectation of, of us being uh, uh, winning because our cross country team was so good and so we gained a lot of points from that. But every little bit other things that we could put in there like of course high jump, shot put and some of the others uh, always made a difference. But we were really pretty competitive and probably in all honesty we were probably, I'm thinking we're more competitive than maybe we were but it seemed like we were always you know in there but it was great. After competing as an athlete and then having children to compete. I mean, did you, how did that help you to look at it uh, with them competing? Well, it would be interesting to ask them that question because <laughs> I had lots of opinions about uh, how they should compete and what they should do. I never pushed the issue and I'll say that with tongue in cheek because my youngest child was a very good runner and I saw it and I made her run at her seventh grade year and she didn't like it, but then when she got doing it, she liked it. So I'll never regret that. But uh, and she was really the only one that really picked up on it. But uh, and I had a lot of opinions on how she did things. Um, I was of the opinion nowadays that the track is kind of a hurting sport. It's not coached like it should be, and so I kind of tried to help out the best I could. You're very much still a supporter of Harding Athletics. Yes, sir. And, and I see you at a lot of events. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite moments uh, as far as uh, in, in any sport uh, uh, over the years and, and watching? Oh, well, basketball has definitely taken a uh, high point. But I will say this, probably my highlight in track and sports in general was when my daughter took the high jump record and I had it at the same time. That was just really a special time for me. But uh, I have, I've always liked basketball and thought men's basketball was it and I've changed now. And I really enjoy watching uh, ladies basketball. And, uh, and I've been to some football, I've been to soccer, um, and I've really got into the women's softball this, this last uh, season also. So I'm pretty much wide open. And what was it like when you found out that you were inducted into the Harding Hall of Fame, Athletics Hall of Fame, you're going to be inducted, and, and what does that mean to you still today? You know, I was quite surprised. Now, probably not the first time you've heard that from, from people, but I was, I was really pretty surprised. And it's, it's special, and um, I think uh, the thing that amazes me most when I walk by and I'll see my picture up there and I'll think, you know, what if I have a child's picture up there or if I have a grandchild that walks by and looks and they're saying there's my there's my granddad was here and that and I said and that's probably the most that's the neatest thing because I realize probably even now people are looking at it going oh who that is you know I don't have a clue who that is but uh, the fact that your family will know it I think that's kind of special.